access to basic health care is a fundamental right of every citizen. This is pivotal to the overall well-being of individual families and the nation as a whole. On this episode of the program, we hope to answer the questions of access in the health sector in terms of adequacy. Now, have you ever heard of the wonder plant called Hospital Too Far? You do not want to miss this on our Nature's Corner. Many thanks for joining us. I am Salwa Khalil Ibrahim. With an ever-growing population, inadequate healthcare infrastructure and manpower have always been a stumbling block to efficient service delivery in Nigeria's health sector. The economic realities in the country has also rubbed off on the cost of medications. Some blame these on the exchange rates. Government, however, says it is aware and committed to resuscitating the healthcare sector. So, what is the situation like now? Stay with us for answers. I'm now joined by Dr. Olu Shegun Akere. He is the Managing Director, Mass Life Healthcare Limited. He is also a trained physician and a health management expert. Many thanks for joining us, Doctor. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Now, give us a little insight into what the health sector looks like at the moment. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Um, in Nigeria today, uh, just like you noted during your preamble, uh, the more than 80% of Nigerians do cannot uh, be said to have adequate access to healthcare. Uh, primary healthcare system is the cornerstone of any developed health system. And um, once that, is, um, that level of care uh, is um, plagued by whatever um, uh, issues, uh, like um, the issues of funding, like the issues of inadequacy of um, human resources, uh, the issues of um, governance structure, uh, issues with um, availability, or even outro, um, absolute lack of um, medicines and um, other consumables to run the system then. Uh, we have the kind of situation that we have in the country today. There is um, this uh, allocative disproportionalism uh, in which we have a situation where uh, more than as much as 70% of the resources, public resources in the health sector uh, is focused more on tertiary and um, secondary levels of care. Uh, whereas uh, in a, an ideal health system, you have uh, upward of 60% of the resources uh, being used or being um, targeted at the primary level of care. So these are some of the issues that we have uh, that has um, stifled uh, access to health care uh, in Nigeria today. Okay. Is this redeemable, like you mentioned? I know we have a lot of challenges, especially at the primary health care level. Yeah, very, 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 very well. They are redeemable, and um, I'm aware that uh, government, uh, over time, uh, up until this current government, is uh, carrying the implementing strategies to uh, read, uh, direct uh, attention to the primary uh, level of healthcare in the country. Um, over the last decade, there have been various um, strategies uh, that have um, aimed at uh, coming up with um, 10,000 uh, primary healthcare centers nationwide. Uh, the target is to put one functional primary healthcare center in every electoral ward uh, in the country. Uh, this, some of the issues that I mentioned earlier, the issues with funding, issues with governance, and uh, the recent um, issues with um, uh, brain drain, you know, many healthcare uh, professionals trained in the country, leaving the country for greener pastures, have 
you know, negatively impacted the implementation of these strategies or the outcomes of these strategies. But uh, gains have been made. Uh, and we're, uh, we're having situations where moribund primary health care centers are being uh, uh, brought back to life. They are being um, refurbished, being re-equipped, and um, uh, the human resource for health care, that is uh, all the health care workers that are required at that level, are also being trained and being uh, encouraged to serve at the level of the uh, primary health care. Yes, the gain appears to be a bit slow, mm -hmm. but we're, we're, we're making some um, inroads based on the activities that the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, uh, as well as this, their state uh, counterparts, state uh, primary health care development agencies, uh, on the supply side of health care. And then, of course, uh, the uh, demand being created by um, the National Health Insurance Authority. Uh, on that side, too, there have been reforms. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a review of the Act from 1999. Uh, in 2022, uh, the then President, uh, uh, Mohamed Buhari, signed into law the um, National Health Insurance Authority Act of 2022, which reviewed uh, the participation in health insurance in Nigeria from voluntary to um, uh, compulsory to which is a step that is required to further uh, expand uh, participation and increase the pool. So these are some of the um, strategies that have been over the last uh, ten, two, one to two decades that have been instituted to uh, better make better the situation in the in the health sector. Okay. Now, let's talk about a little bit of our, our facilities, infrastructure now, to be specific. We have a lot of uh, primary health care centers scattered around the country. In every, almost every community has a primary health care center. Now, these structures are there, not necessarily the facilities or the equipment. What do you think are some of the issues? And where do you, how do you think we can get that right? All right, thank you very much. Um, uh, like you've noted um, rightly, uh, in many cases, this, the infrastructure that is the building of, um, for this prim uh, designated for primary health care centers mm. are there uh, in the communities. Uh, but over time, usually when they are built and they are equipped mm. and everything is new, uh, they look attractive and they are actually functional. Uh, but within a year or two, you begin to see a deterioration uh, in the state uh, and, the cap and even in the capacity of these health centers to provide the services that they could provide at the beginning. So once uh, the uh, eyes, so to speak, are taken off them and um, to move into other areas, then issues with um, uh, uh, compliance uh, become uh, uh, the real issue for uh, so healthcare providers are not encouraged um, to uh, remain in these health centers. Some of them, it's due to the fact that they are not well, um, uh, they're not well paid for the services that they they are providing. Uh, the issues with governance of those facilities, once uh, uh, equipments and um, res other resources like medicines and, uh, and uh, other consumables run out. They are not replenished. And so you find a situation where uh, um, healthcare providers uh, just come in, uh, they sit all day, they sit all week. Uh, even when people come with their health challenges, mm -hmm. members of the community, these health providers are unable to help them in any way because there are simply no resources with which they are going to be able to help them. No drugs and no e uh, equipment. So uh, you just see things just generally go down mm -hmm. and um, the facilities run out of uh, operations and the infrastructure themselves become dilapidated. So that's kind of how uh, things have been over the decades.
-hmm. And that's what the uh, uh, National Primary Health Care uh, Development Agency and the state counterparts uh, are now working to uh, ensure that this uh, kind of cycle is um, broken mm -hmm. and that we can have thriving primary health care centers uh, and a thriving primary health care system in the country. I should also mention that the, one of the reforms uh, in the health sector uh, is the uh, Basic Health Care Provision Fund. Mm. And there are two aspects to this fund uh, in terms of its uh, operations. There is the, uh, about 50% of this fund uh, that is channeled to the Primary Health Care Development Agency. Uh, to take care of the supply side, mm. to ensure that these facilities are uh, built, equipped, staffed, and there's a, a viable drug and consumables revolving uh, fund that will keep these facilities alive and running, providing the services that they should provide to the community members. And um, to also see to it that the community takes ownership of this facilities, uh, so, which is something that has been missing. These facilities are essentially seen as government facilities, and so it's only when government comes mm. uh, to uh, undertake oversight that um, anything happens. That's supposed, that's to change. So the members of the community are to now take ownership, mm. uh, provide leadership, uh, and um, uh, have this, uh, those who are running these facilities to be accountable to members of the community. So these are some of the reforms that are currently being uh, undertaken in the health sector, which we believe uh, are moving uh, the sector in the, in the right direction. Okay, now, Doctor, we'll take a breather here. When we return, we'll speak about some of the solution toward access to health for all. Join us again. Imagine lovely meals you can cook with these ingredients. Mm. You spend heavily, but no guarantee of a tasty meal. Not making a right choice of seasoning cube can ruin your meal, money, and confidence. For a tasty meal, do not compromise. Choose gold. Use Terra Gold for the rich, consistent taste your loved ones crave for. Good for soups, stews, and jollof. Terra Gold. One cube, endless possibilities. The world needs mums. With a splash of golden terra oil, a mum can transform a frown into a smile. Change no thanks into yes please. Resolve family feuds without blowing a whistle. Providing tasty family meals is all that matters. Where there are mums, there is love. Golden terra oil or pure love. Many thanks for being there. Now, Doctor, in the last one year, we've seen priority given to the health sector and a lot of policies. Now, uh, what is your opinion towards that, some of the policies in the healthcare sector in recent times? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, the policies are definitely not only well-intentioned, they are necessary, uh, I mean, for to uh, as they say you can do things the same way and expect to get di uh, different results Certainly. so we we definitely must keep looking at um, the sector we must be uh, putting heads together to see how we can move forward and we must also uh, bring lessons learned from uh, other climbs uh, into to, to bear you know in how we're going to move forward from where we are mm -hmm. so uh, the reforms are, and policies are, are necessary. They are a good um, way forward. However, um, the implementation of these policies is, uh, then becomes the, the, the next issue. Um, one crucial factor to the implementation of uh, reforms will be the issue of um, availability of um, funds uh, to be able to carry out uh, uh, whatever th those uh, recommendations in these reforms. Okay. Now, beyond the issue of funding now, and I know you're an 
expert and not just a professional in this field now. What is your general overview now on a final note and advice towards access to health for all, despite the challenges? How can we get it right? Access uh, in, the health, in, the, uh, in health uh, refers to ensuring, first of all, that there is no financial barrier. Uh, people who need health care can actually walk into the health facilities around them and um, not be worried about um, what, how they are going to meet their financial, uh, the financial requirements that they need to meet to be able to access the health care. Uh, access can also be uh, geographical. Uh, if some, a pregnant woman, for example, needs to have antenatal care, she, she's not sick, but she needs to have antenatal care. Uh, but whether or not she's going to have antenatal care depends on how close to her uh, the facility is. If the facility is far away and she needs to travel uh, very uh, huge distances to get there, she probably will not and will want to save her resources for other things like maybe feeding the family. Or, uh, and so there can be, there, these are all the issues that, uh, that can confront access. However, the, uh, so w the solution has to be along those lines. Mm. We've, I've talked a lot about the issue of availability of funds. Uh, the funds in the health sector uh, has to be as public as possible. Then uh, this uh, effort to put private, uh, pri um, sorry, primary health care centers as close as possible to the people has to uh, continue uh, and then uh, there has to be adequate staffing for all of these um, health centers. Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be the uh, community health and sexual workers, nurses and um, uh, maybe even doctors. Uh, so uh, that has to be there. There has to also be an effective drug revolving and consumables revolving scheme such that the facilities when they run out, in fact, they don't even run out of drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, before the drugs run out, they have a system in place to replenish their stock. So, because once people come in uh, and they don't have, uh, they can't get drugs, they can't get uh, help uh, that will actually solve their problems, they are not going to come back. And then, they, they, if need be, they will have to travel very far or they will look for other solutions. So, these are some of these. Um, uh, these are some of the interventions that I believe uh, need to be put in the health sector to make things better than uh, where we are right now. Very much appreciated, mm -hmm. Doctor, for coming to Health Options. Thank you very much for yes. having me. Okay. We've been speaking about access to public health in Nigeria with Dr. Olushewu Akere. Now, nature, they say, is the best medicine. Little wonder the creator gave us a whole hospital in a plant. You're wondering what plant that is? Let's move to our nature's corner to learn about it. Terra Cube is available in beef, chicken, jollof, and shrimp flavors at attractive prices of 50, 100, 200, and 500 naira. Terra Cube, or Rap Joy, or Leash Taste. So today we want to discuss a few of these plants. Uh, one of them is this plant, I don't know, some of the viewers should be able to identify which plant it is. This plant, people commonly call it hospital tufa. And generally in the local name in Hausa, people call, call it Asibut Denisa. Its scientific name actually is Euphobia tangerensis. It is from the family 
you for BAC. This plant is a highly nutritional plant. It's commonly used by people in their soups, in their cookings. And it is a plant that grows very, very fast. It's commonly available. And at the same time, it's a very safe plant because one of the issues that people are concerned with about traditional medicine is the issue of safety. And the two words are very, very critical in the utilization of herbal medicine. Two words, safety and efficacy. These are the two important aspects that we consider. And people are very skeptical about herbal medicine because they will ask, is it safe? Does it work? And these are the things that we look at once we want to utilize any medicinal plants for any therapeutic purpose. So this particular plant is safe, it's nutritive, it's one of the plants that we used to call nutraceuticals. Nutraceutical plants are plants that are nutritive and at the same time they have pharmaceutical value. So this plant is a kind of a blood booster. It boosts the blood, it promotes appetite, and it also has rich vitamins and minerals that are very, very important to the body. And one of the things that I want to point out is that most of our hospitals, particularly children that are under five, we have two main issues in this country that really bedeviled the young ones, malaria and malnutrition. And I've been arguing that we have rich medicinal plants, we have rich nutraceutical plants, we have rich nutritive plants in this country that can, we can easily formulate good materials that we can be giving our children instead of always giving them these multivitamins that we are giving them, which people cannot even afford. It means that using plants like this, euphibia, using plants like moringa, our botanists and our pharmacognosis can easily formulate very, very easy, sustainable, affordable formulation that can be used for our younger ones in order to address malnutrition in our hospitals. The plant can be processed in uh, various means. One of the ways that you can prepare it is to prepare it in, the, in your food. In the same way as you put your spinach, in a food, you can add it. Another way is that you can cook this plant separately or along with others so that you can add it also to your rice or to your food. Another thing is that you can powder this plant because in case you want to travel and you want to carry it, you can powder it, you can dry it in shade and you can powder it and you can be using it as tea or you can be adding it to your food. You can use it in so many different ways because it's a food. At the same time, we are not thinking of any toxicity or anything that uh, will limit uh, the consumption of the plant. So this is really a challenge to us. And it's something very, very easy. It's something we can easily do. Apart from that, we can uh, give advice to parents and uh, women that, that, uh, that, that, that have young children. And even the elderly will benefit from this because the elderly and other people that have background elements that cannot eat other foods, example, diabetic patients. They are asked not to eat this, not to eat that. And sometimes they tend to have some deficiencies because they cannot eat certain things. So these plants can be of very, very important to this category of people. You see, it can be very, very important because it's nutritive, it's available, it's uh, bio-renewable, it's something that we can you can grow at your backyard or you can grow in your pots. And so we come to the end of this week's episode of Health Options. You can watch these as well as previous episodes of the program on our YouTube channel at www.nta.gov.ng. Your questions, comments and suggestions are also welcome. Thanks for your company. I am Salwa Kalal Ibrahim.